Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, it's going to be a huge, huge art haul. And by huge, I mean ginormously huge. I've got a lot of different stuff here. Um, just for the sake of consistency for the video, I figured I would break it up into three, or rather four small categories. <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't use the word small. It's not gonna be small. We're gonna break it into four categories. I've got um, things for acrylic, things for watercolor, things for pastel, and just some general purpose around the studio kind of things that I've picked up along the way. Um, quick little disclaimer to this video. This is, again, a huge art haul, but I did not purchase all this stuff at one time. So, you know, it's been things that I've been purchasing and collecting for around the last two and a half months worth of art haul. So just something to keep in mind. Some of these things I purchased as soon as, you know, um, yesterday, last night, a couple of these things I purchased and some of these things I've been collecting and I'll kind of go ahead and point those things out along the way to you guys. But I don't want to spend forever getting into this video. Um, but before we do start, if you haven't already and you'd like to, please hit the subscribe button and the thumbs up button down below. It really helps out my channel. And also, if you don't like haul videos and you don't like watching people share things that they've shopped for and purchased, then don't watch the video. You know, I mean, you knew what this was going into it. You read the title of the video, so don't complain to me about it. All right, let's go ahead and get into it. The first thing I want to start with is just like the general purpose items um, that I picked up for the studio. And I wanted to show you guys this huge tub of the Masters Brush Cleaner and Preserver. I love this stuff. I absolutely love this stuff. And, um... I'm trying to find a net weight on here, 24 ounces. Usually you get the little one, and I've gone through so many of the little ones, I don't have one to show you here, but they're usually about the size of, of one of these little containers here. So this is a huge, huge, huge tub, and it'll last me so, so long. I use it for cleaning acrylic brushes, of course, also watercolor brushes occasionally, sponges, all kinds of stuff, and it really is the best of the best, so it's good to have it. I also picked up, but I don't have it to show you right this minute because I already opened it, their... Um, you know, like hand soap or whatever. It's in the bar, the bar soap for cleaning your hands. And that stuff is a lifesaver. If you get your hands all dirty and grimy, um, it really is great to have on hand. Oh, and one more thing before I begin. I apologize for the state of my desk. You know, it's like the mat's all dirty and everything, but I'm in the middle of a painting um, that I will be sharing with you guys really, really soon. So, uh, you know, this is real life. This is what you'd see if you came in my studio. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, I also picked up some of these artist jars from Hobby Lobby. They're not very expensive, but um, I'm hoping these ones will be better than the other ones that I have. And of course, I don't have them to show you offhand, but they um, weren't like airtight enough. They snapped together, but this one's got the screw top, so I'm hoping that they'll keep my uh, acrylic paint mixtures a little bit fresher. So I grabbed that. I also finally broke down and bought myself a somewhat decent ruler because for the past 10 years, I swear this is true, I've been using this little 25 cent like school ruler that I actually used in school like 10 years ago. <laughs> so it's nice to have like an actually decent ruler and so far I'm really liking it. I also picked up some circle templates. The first one that I got was from Artist Loft and the second one I got, I picked up from Westcott is the brand. And um, these are actually really, really useful reference to have. They're kind of in the same vein as something like a ruler and they, they can be really helpful artist tools. I know you're probably thinking to yourself, well, you're an artist, you tell me you can't draw a circle and I completely get that and that's why I didn't like buy them originally, but they are actually quite useful to have. And if you are in the market to invest in some of these, and they're not expensive, but um, I do think that just offhand from feeling from inside the package, the Westcott one does seem to be a little bit thicker and nicer quality. I also picked up, oh, that's good, something fell. Um, okay, let me show you the box for this. I kept it specifically for this video, and I don't know if it's even gonna fit on camera in frame. But I picked up a brand new Stephen Quiller porcelain palette. Now, um, I have had one of these for the last five years, and I was absolutely in love with mine. 
Um, and these are not cheap. These are all solid porcelain and they weigh about 15 pounds. I will go ahead and show it to you on camera open, but I wanted to show you the box in case you were interested. Um, I had one that I absolutely used and loved for about five years. And then at the end of the last painting that I was working on in watercolor, which I'll be sharing with you very soon, a uh, disaster happened and I was so horribly devastated. I can't even explain to you guys how I felt. I was in love with that palette and I lost the palette and all the paint that was inside. So I screamed, I cried, I had a little emotional breakdown and then we moved on and we bought a new palette. So I absolutely love this. I feel like I just can't even paint in watercolor a lot of the times for my serious paintings without it. There's nothing like mixing on porcelain if you're a watercolor painter. You got all these nice large one inch wells. It's very weighted, very heavy, very solid. Um, it's not going anywhere. And the porcelain, when you squeeze your tubes of paint into the palette, really does help keep them a little bit more moist. It comes with this little strip of insulator tape, which I found on my last one. Oops, sorry about that. Wasn't quite enough to make it all the way around, so we'll see if they gave us enough this time. I don't know. But, oh, so devastated and heartbroken about the last one, but I went ahead and I did pick up a new one, and I'm very, very excited. So I will be making a video um, setting up this palette in the future, so subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And like I said, this is really, really heavy, and as long as you take care of it, it will last you a lifetime. And in that same order, I purchased a bunch of tubes of watercolors. Um, I do have plenty of watercolors, but these were the colors that I was actually out of or running very low on that I needed to um, finish setting up that palette the way that it was originally set up the last one that I had. So as you can see, I've got this whole container here full of my wonderful M. Graham and Daniel Smith watercolors. They really are my absolute favorite. But these are the ones that I just happened to be out of. So I picked up um, Daniel Smith Quinacridone Purple. This is a really super intense, almost like the color of my nails, even more intense vibrant pigment. And this was the star of the show in the the last painting that I did in watercolor, um, that it, it's a roses painting that you will be seeing very shortly on this channel. I'm editing it together tonight. Um, for Also from Daniel Smith, I picked up Transparent Pyral Orange. This is a must-have color for me. Uh, I feel like it's a very unique earth red slash earth orange kind of color, very fiery, very transparent, and I just don't feel like I can replicate this in any other brand, so it's a must, must have. I'm just going to put them away in my set here as I go. I also picked up a tube of Winsor & Newton Quinacridone Magenta. This small tube was 20 bucks. Winsor & Newton, I'm looking at you. That, that's expensive. I'm sorry, especially for a quinacridone pigment, but their quinacridone magenta is the most vibrant and the most bright of any other brand. And so here we go. And also I wanted to, rec I wanted to suggest or point out that these are 14 milliliter tubes. Everybody else is doing 15 milliliter tubes. So you're paying more and you're getting less with Winsor & Newton. And I'm honestly not so thrilled about that, but that color I have to have. Um, also from Daniel Smith, well, you know what, I'll get to it in a second. Um, I also picked up from M. Graham, which are my favorite, favorite, favorite watercolors. I got Hansa Yellow Deep. I also picked up Azo Yellow, but um, this order was at the end of August, and I am still waiting for Blick to get it to me. It's really a little bit disappointing, um, but here's an open tube of the uh, Azo Yellow, so I do have enough to set up the palette, but I... I ordered one and I still haven't gotten it. I got Pyrol Red, which my reds are very, very important to me in all forms of painting. And this one is just the most luscious red in my opinion. It's very special to me. I also got Quinacridone Rose. Their Rose, again, is my favorite. And I'm thinking of ordering their um, acrylic in Quinacridone Rose, hoping that the pigment will be the same because it really is beautiful. Permanent Alizarin Crimson, something very special about that color. Um, I got their sap green. I also have Daniel Smith sap green, and they're both good, but I do think I prefer most time the M. Graham. 
um, phthalo blue, anthraquinone blue, and transparent red iron oxide, which which is PR 101. It tends to be my preferred to burnt sienna. I like burnt sienna, but um, and I have it, but I tend to prefer this one most of the time, and it does mix a more chromatic black or gray when you go for it. So I've got those put away and I've got that over here and I'm all ready to set up my new porcelain palette which I'm excited about. Also going along with watercolor I picked up um, two tiny tiny tubes of the Daniel Smith in Hansa Yellow Medium and Permanent Alizarin Crimson. I do have these colors again in the um, M. Graham, but I wanted these and I got the two little half pans because I do have a Schmincke metal tin that I keep all my Daniel Smith colors in and I just felt like my little Daniel Smith palette was missing a really clear true yellow like their medium yellow and a nice um, crimson nice permanent crimson color so I wanted to add that to my um, half pan palette here my tin box so I got tiny tubes of that again I really do like the Daniel Smith colors but I have to be honest I prefer M. Graham, a hundred percent, truly. But there's some Daniel Smith colors that you just can't get in M. Graham. They're still a relatively small company, I think, and um, they just don't make as many colors. But what they do make is made in small batches, and it is top, top quality. I also picked up some Daniel Smith watercolor ground. Now, this is not really a new product. Um, I know that Golden has made an absorbent ground for a really long time. And uh, this is definitely a very acrylic based product. I've already dipped into this a little bit and I have to tell you, I'm not that impressed with it to be honest, but I'll keep using it and I'll let you know um, how I feel about that. And then I picked up, and these things are worth their weight in gold, a natural rubber pickup, also known as a rubber cement pickup sometimes. If you work realistically in watercolor, or even if you don't, but if you use masking fluid, you need one of these. And in the disaster that happened, um, I lost my previous one, so I went ahead and I picked up another one. And that is all for the watercolor stuff. Okay, so moving on to the acrylic paint portion of this haul. The next thing I picked up was this set of Golden Professional Fluid Acrylics. Now, I have a set of the High Flow paints. They're really thin. Like, if you listen to that, hold, maybe you can hear that. Let me hold that up to the mic. See how thin that is? I hope you heard that. It's like water in there. And they're pretty pigmented and they're pretty nice, but they are a little bit on the sheer side and they're not quite the viscosity that I was looking for. I do paint mostly in heavy body paint, um, but for details, fine details, you really do need something a little bit thinner. So I went ahead and I picked these up and you can see I've already dipped into these and I have to tell you, I've been working on them on my recent painting and I love these. For me, the golden um, high flows are very thin like water and they just don't have the right brush feel to me and they just don't go as far. With these, one tiny little drop is all you need and you would be surprised just how far one tiny little drop would go. So when I first saw these tiny bottles I thought well wouldn't I much rather have this larger bottle but I'm glad I started with these tiny ones because with how little I'll need them you know with how little of them I'll be using um, I think these are gonna last me quite a long time. So this set comes with your basics it comes with a um, <laughs> Hmm. Whatever that word is, yellow there. I, now see, it's PY154. Benzamidazolone. No one laugh. I know you're all laughing at home. Uh, yellow medium has PY154. I don't have anything in that pigment, unfortunately, so I'm not sure how much I'd use that. Pyrrole red. Again, one of my favorite reds, gotta have it. Quinacridone magenta, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, phthalo green, yellow oxide, which is like a synthetic yellow ochre, burnt sienna, carbon black, which I don't ever like black in anything, and titanium white. I, know I don't wanna pay for black. I don't use black. I mix my own chromatic blacks, but 
there you go, it comes with it if you want that. And um, I also picked up separately the large titanium white because I knew that I would want to use this for other things as well, like base coating the canvas to get it a little bit smoother. Um, so once I tried these and I liked them so much, I went ahead and I wanted to pick up more. And they're off to the side here. I went ahead and I picked up one of every color that um, corresponds to the paint tubes that I have. Because I do have a, a big set of golden um, heavy bodies. Um, and these are these are great paints. These really are. So I wanted them to, uh, I wanted to have a color that matched each one of my heavy body tubes. I hope that made sense. That way when I'm working on a painting, um, and I just need a thinner consistency for details like fur, feathers, fine lines, etc. Then I can go ahead and use the exact same pigment to, to get that color so that I can retain that color harmony. So um, first I picked up Hansi Yellow Medium. Now here's something I wanted to mention and I don't know if any of you have noticed this if you're using these. But I've got the tube of Hansi Yellow Medium, same pigment, PY73, and it says ASTM Light Fast 1, right? Which is excellent. In the high flow, again, PY73 light fast one. Okay. How come PY73 Hansi Yellow Medium in their fluid acrylics is light fast fair? Is this a typo? Is this an error? I'm going to have to email the company and find out what's going on with that because I thought that this was. Um, a very safe archival light fast pigment. I've trusted this pigment over the years. So are we going back on that now? It, I, I don't understand. If it's not light fast here, it can't be light fast here either, correct? I don't know. So I'm going to email the company um, and hopefully get an answer on that. I also picked up Hansi Yellow Light, which is PY3, and that's a light fast of two. I understand that's a little bit fugitive. Um, I got their Hansi Yellow Opaque which is PY74, and that's a really nice, clear, bright yellow that I like to use. I also got their Daralide Yellow. Um, Pyrol Red Light. It comes with Pyrol Red, but I wanted to also pick up the light variation of that pigment. Quinacridone Red, which is really like a permanent rose kind of a color. Quinacridone Crimson. And Quinacridone Nickel Azo Gold. Ultramarine Violet, Anthracrinone Blue, which you can see almost looks black in that swatch, but it is a very dark um, chromatic indigo. It's kind of like, um, I've always referred to it as the sort of warm equivalent to Prussian Blue. It's, it's like a darker ultramarine kind of thing. Whoops. Transparent Red Iron Oxide, because you know I love my glazing colors. Um, transparent yellow iron oxide. That color does not look pleasant there, does it? But it is useful. Um, sap green hue. This is a permanent mixture, light fast one. Dioxys in purple and zinc white because um, I like to have two different variations of the white whenever I work. One that's opaque and one transparent. Um, and in the same vein, I picked up the Liquitex Soft Body Acrylics in the Unbleached Titanium shade. Now, I know Golden makes a titanium buff, but I really prefer the Liquitex one on this one. So that's what I've got there. And then a couple of these colors I picked up new in the tube also to correspond to some of them. So I also picked up Ultramarine Violet in the Heavy Body. Um, nickel quinacridone gold. Now I don't know why this one has a different label. I picked these up at AC Moore by the way. And this is the only one that has this funny cap on it also which is strange but it does say golden on there. Um, quinacridone crimson to match again with this quinacridone crimson. Transparent red iron oxide again with that funny label. I'm not sure why it just must be an older one. Transparent yellow iron oxide sap green hue and I have to tell you their sap green hue is a very historical hue it's very dark in mass tone and it's it's really lovely I have to say it really is and uh, also that quinacridone red which is very transparent and again it's more of like a quinacridone rose or permanent rose shade it is PV19 so I picked those up and then in the larger tubes 
I picked up a huge titanium white. This is the five fluid ounce tube and a huge ultramarine blue because these are colors I use a lot. And briefly, I just wanted to mention that I really think Golden has the best titanium white. Now you might be thinking, well, white is white, but it's really not. I'm getting ready to pretty much throw out this Liquitex Heavy Body White. Um, because check your tubes before you buy Liquitex. They're kind of hit and miss and inconsistent. But I've noticed that in general, white has a problem. Like uh, my Matisse Titanium White also had this kind of curdly cottage cheese texture. And I love Matisse paints. I'm not down on Matisse paints, I have to be honest. I really do love them so, so much. But um, more this is a Liquitex thing. Uh, this paint is just like gross like it's just like cottage cheese in there and it's really almost ready for the garbage so um and this is not old either it came this way so um i really feel like it's worth the extra money to buy golden for the white because it's the only white i've ever gotten that's been creamy and buttery and smooth going along with this golden haul i also picked up a small like trial set i guess you could say of the golden open acrylics this is their traditional set which makes sense because it's got these tiny little baby tubes of indian yellow um alizarin crimson ultramarine blue sap green and van dyke brown and titanium white which is the only opaque pigment in here. I also kind of busted into these a little bit and gave them a little try. Not like a fair chance or anything. I could do a review on these if you guys are interested, but I will say right off the bat, I do feel like these are very, very transparent. Um, now, the colors in here are of transparent in nature, but far more transparent than what's in their heavy body tubes and even more transparent than what's in these uh, fluid acrylics also. And just another little note here, um, I feel like the high flows are far more transparent and weak than these. So these really were just the thing I was looking for. They really fit the bill. And as you can see, I went a little bit overboard and bought a ton of them. But uh, yeah, just to kind of recap, um, so far these slow drying open acrylics, I'm not a huge fan. Um, you know, I, I have to give them a little bit more time, I guess, but uh, maybe they're just not for me. But to go along with that, I did pick up the mediums that go along with it, the open thinner, you know, to use in place of water, and that worked okay. And this product really kind of blew me away, it was a surprise of the bunch, the open acrylic medium gloss. Um, now, I find this to be a really nice uh, alternative to retarder and as long as you don't use too much I find that this had a much better brush feel and glide and flow than the retarder which can be to be honest a little bit sticky. Uh, retarder is not my favorite thing and it, it, honestly it, you know it comes with a whole new set of problems when you use it um, and I wouldn't use it on any of my initial layers because you don't want that underneath there. The only product I really love from Liquitex that I tend to use in place of that is the slow dry blending medium from them. This has a really buttery blendy feel. So I'd rather use this nine times out of 10 instead of retarder or even instead of this open medium. But if you were looking for something to keep your paint open longer and work sort of in place of a retarder without so much of that sticky thick feel. This really is a, a lovely medium and I'll definitely use that up. And then a couple more mediums I picked up here real fast, the end of the acrylic haul. I picked up the GAC 100 and the airbrush medium. Now I picked up the airbrush medium because I kind of felt like, you know, um, if I wanted to thin these out a little bit more to an ink consistency to use with like a dip pen, because I do use my dip pen a lot in my art sometimes, or, you know, um, just for fine details and get them a little bit more like the fluid, uh, the high flow rather consistency, that would be useful. I haven't tested it out yet, so I can't tell you. I think you can also use this with your heavy body acrylics, but I'm not sure how well that would work, to be honest. Um, and then I picked up the GAC 100 because this breaks down uh, the, your heavy body paint better than any other acrylic polymer medium. It's what is essentially in the gloss glazing liquid plus a little bit of retarder. So it's like a really perfect blend, this gloss glazing liquid. And I use this a ton, like absolutely must have, cannot paint acrylic without it. 
But I thought, well, since I like this so much, I thought, well, maybe I'd try this um, and see which I like better. I don't know, but uh, I'm, I have a feeling it's not going to replace my gloss glazing liquid. But I do use this all the time to reduce viscosity, to get fine details, um, to get better blends and for glazing. So this is kind of like an all-in-one thing for me, the gloss glazing liquid. But I, I it was like a two fur kind of deal where you had to get a certain number of items to get the sale so I thought uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll give it a go um, so yeah I got a ton of acrylic paint supplies okay. so the last thing that I picked up and I am so excited to share this with you guys is I finally got the entire 80 color set of pan pastels. This is something that I've been thinking about for a really long time. I don't want you to think that I just went into this um, and, and and like a spur of the moment thing just decided to buy them all. That's not what happened. Um, for the last year I've been working with a very limited set of these um, that I purchased open stock and I absolutely loved them and I found them so so useful in my art for a plethora of different techniques that you really can't get with traditional pastels. I absolutely love pastel and it's a beautiful, beautiful medium, but something that's unique about pan pastel that I feel not only to block in large areas of color very smoothly, smoothly very quickly, but also the ability to glaze transparent veils of color that was just not possible before with traditional pastel sticks. The kind of negative about pan pastel is that on the flip side of that, unless you work very loosely, very impressionistically, you are probably not going to be able to do an entire piece with just pan pastels. So I really had to ask myself if it was worth it um, for such a large, large investment. We're going to go over the different sets, what colors and what tools come in each set in just a moment. But I do feel like this bring something new and different to the table and has something unique to offer that none of my other supplies have and makes everything else that I have more versatile. If a supply is going to come into my studio, uh, I feel like it has to have that and these really are worthy. They're all highly pigmented, they're all the finest quality, light fast, archival, super soft and buttery. So I'm going to talk a little bit about each set. I, these boxes are empty, I saved all the boxes just for this video and I'll be so happy to get them out of my studio after this haul. Um, but I wanted to keep them for demonstrative purposes for the haul because I wanted to be able to show you exactly what comes in each set. Um, and I was thinking about doing a full review on these if you guys are interested, but if I did the review, here's the question. If I do the review, I am going to pull in other supplies, stick pastels, pa pastel pencils, things like that, so to render a full piece of artwork so it would still be useful to you guys. Would you still want to see that? Let me know in the comment section down below and I will do my best. So I collected these over the course of the last two and a half months. Every two weeks or so I would order another set when I could afford it. I got them from dickblick.com and I started with the Pure Painting Colors set. Um, then I ordered the tints because I noticed everything in the, and I'll show you the real supplies in the palettes in just a moment. Everything that comes in the pure painting set, you get all the colors plus black and white so you could mix everything from that set. But I noticed that my white was getting contaminated really, really quickly trying to mix the pastel shades, the tints. So that's the order that I feel like they're useful if you're trying to collect these. The painting colors first, then the tints, then the extra darks, because they have some of the most chromatic, beautiful darks that I've ever seen in any range of pastel, period. Hands down, end of paragraph, no more comment on that, okay? That's my opinion. They've got the best darks. And if you have the pure colors and the darks, you can mix the shades really effectively and really easily. So if you were just going to get three sets, I feel personally, in my opinion, that you could almost go ahead and discard the shades. Because if you just bought them this way, you'd basically have everything you need. Now, unfortunately, when you buy it this way, instead of the full set all at one time, you do not get the palette tray with the cover. So I had to go ahead and order each time I placed an order, 
the palette tray with the cover for 20 pans. So it does kind of, it all works out to be about the same price anyway, but it's, it's a smaller investment each time you save up. But I ended up buying four of these palette trays with the cover, and I also got a 10 color tray, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, and I'll show it to you. So let me go ahead and show you, let me get this off screen, put it on the floor, and show you the pan pastels. So here we go. These are the tints, and I apologize, there's probably going to be a little bit of a glare. This is the, sh the tint set. Let me stand up just to make sure 100% that's all in the range. Yeah, I think that's all in frame. Very good. These are the tints, and they are just some of the most soft, beautiful shades that I've ever seen in all my life. Now, when you order this way, when you collect them this way, there are two tints from the set when you order the full 80 color set that you won't get because you get white black uh, white twice and you get black twice when you order this way. So the two tints that you would be missing are neutral gray tint 820.7 and the um Oh, uh, the blue gray one, what's it called? I'm so sorry, I'm drawing a blank, but it's it's in another set, hold on. Payne's gray tint, 0.7. This color, right here. So these two are the two that I had to order open stock in order to have a full and complete set. And I also ordered the colorless blender for glaze techniques. And this is the 10 color um, set that you see here. And the colors that I have in here, um, I'm currently using for a painting, so that's why they're in here. And that's why I bought this 10 color pan. I, I'm sorry if there's a glare. Let me open it up. But I bought it this way because I knew that I would be using less than 10 colors um, in every artwork that I did as companion pieces to go along with the sticks and everything and I wanted to be able to have those colors in a smaller more convenient place so that's why I bought these um, so just to let you know if you're collecting this way these two tints and I think this one's lovely but again you can mix so much so I don't know if they're hundred percent necessary to be completely honest but um, that's that so this is the palette that I'm currently using for a painting I'm working on. And these are really good sturdy quality. They don't feel flimsy to me at all. They feel really thick, really heavy, nice sturdy plastic. I don't think they're going to go brittle anytime soon. So these are the tints. And they all do stack. These are most of the pure colors. As you can see, there's a couple missing out of here because they're in here so this is because I'm I'm using them right now so this is the um, ultramarine blue that's being taken out um, a couple of grays and a black is missing from here and the white um, but these are the tints and uh, the, the pure color set this is what you would get and again not the tray these are the shades and if you can tell side by side hopefully you can tell they're just a hair darker. So that's what I meant by if you were gonna skip any set, I'd kind of, see how close those are? I mean, seriously, like side by side, they're really, really, really close. You could just add a tiny skosh of black um, and get away with that just fine, I feel, in my opinion. And if you're wondering why these two are capped, they do come with two caps. So if you don't want to buy the palette tray, they all do stack like this. So if you want to have them stacked up, that's absolutely fine. You could do that as well. But the reason I capped these two colors is because they are cobalt colors. And cobalt is a heavy metal that I don't allow in my studio and I don't want to be breathing in. So that's why those two are capped. And then these <clears throat> are the extra. Let me take that off. If you guys want to review on these, I'll make sure to demonstrate them with no cap on the top. Hopefully you can see just how beautiful and chromatic these are. A lot of the ones that I started with in my limited stack last year were the extra darks because that was the gap that I needed to fill. 
in my um, pastel collection. I, mean, it's, I feel like it's so hard to find really good darks. Rembrandt does a set of really good darks that I have that I love, but um, yeah, so that is those. And as you can see, they do stack really, really well. They are quite heavy when they're all stacked together and just do be careful when you're moving them. So each one of the sets, unfortunately, and I want to talk about the tools for a little bit, um, each one of the sets comes with almost identical tools. I'm pretty sure they're all identical. You're going to get a square palette knife kind of uh, soft tool, and you're going to get the more rounded like filbert type one. And then you're going to get... Um, you're going to get a triangle, you're going to get the one that kind of looks like a finger, and then a couple of these um, little sock-like things for the tips of it. And there's a, such a big whole host of tools that you could get. And I kind of wish, and, and by the way, I ended up with four of these giant round oval sponges. Four of them! So apparently Pam Pastel really likes these. I really like the art bars. I think they're called the like spongy tool ones. And I picked up a separate pack individually. I don't have them to show you. Well, actually, hold on. Hold on, hold on. In here from this painting, I've got the one that's kind of like a triangle shape that I've been using. And I like that one the best. But they have a square one and a bunch of other tools. And again, this is just a haul, but I, I could do a whole review on these if you're interested. But I really like these. These clean up really well with the Master's Brush Cleaner every now and then when you need a good cleaning on them. Um, they've got that nice point on there, but you can also get like very opaque passages of color, nice large swatches of color, and um, they're built very well. They're made of a nice, really good material. The art sponges are the best tool, in my opinion, that the company makes. I, it's not that I don't like these soft tools, um, the palette knife ones, which by the way, this is not all of them that I got. I mean, I've got even more because you get two in every set and they're all identical. So I guess I'm really good on these for a while. But you guys have so, Pam Pastel if you're watching, there's so many tools. Why not include in each set a variety of tools so if you're collecting over time, you'd get a sampling of all the tools that they have to offer instead of duplicates in every single set. I just don't understand that personally. So purchasing this way, I ended up with duplicates of the black and white, and then I had to purchase open stock these tints. But personally, I don't mind that because you use them up, you know, um, and it's nice to have an extra white. But so far, I have to tell you, I really, really do like these. I'm really, really happy with them. Um, and the tools, like I said, the, the, the art bars, I think they're called, unless that's something else that I'm thinking of. Goodness gracious. Sponge bars. Okay, art bars was a product that Derwent made like a long time ago. They were like wax pastels or something. Um, sorry, sponge bars. They're really made of the best high quality material. They're gonna last the longest. These sponges here with the, the palette knives, if you um, work on a sanded surface, which I do, or any kind of textured surface especially, you're going to really go through these. You're going to wear holes in them pretty easily, to be completely honest. Now, I've been pretty gentle with mine, and, and you know, gentle pressure is really key with these. But in general, I think these are a better investment if you wanted to invest in some of the tools. Another question that I got was, can I use the tools with my regular stick pastels? And the answer is no. E even the Schmincke ones, they're just not soft enough and it's not gonna pick up the same. So just to let you guys know, um, if you want that pan pastel effect, you, you have to invest in them. But there are a lot of different sets. You don't have to collect them all. You really can get by with a limited set and I would definitely recommend starting with the pure color set, the pure painting set, um, if you wanna invest in them because everything, in the painting set, um, you, you get all of the pure colors plus black and white, so you can mix absolutely everything from that set. And then you can decide what you're going to need personally for the way you work to fill in the gaps. And that is the end of my haul, finally. 
all that talking later. Um, <laughs> I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it in, well, at least enjoyable. Um, and if you want more videos in the future, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below. Let me know if you're interested in reviewing these, but just to let you know in general, overall, my thoughts are very, very good on these. And um, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye.